Welcome to How to Live a Happy Life, The Power of Positive Thinking. I'm your host, Alina, and today we are diving deep into the transformative impact of positive thinking on our overall well-being and happiness. With our esteemed guests, we will explore the techniques and mindset shifts needed to unlock a truly fulfilling life. So grab a cup of tea, get cozy, and get ready to be inspired. Let's start with you, Alex. In your experience, how does positive thinking directly influence one's happiness? Great question, Elena. Positive thinking isn't just about expecting the best to happen every time, but rather it's about accepting that whatever happens, you can handle it positively. It's a powerful tool that can significantly reduce stress and anxiety, leading to a happier and more fulfilling life. Scientific studies have shown that positive thinking can improve our physical health, enhance our resilience, and even extend our lifespan. Building on what Alex said, it's also crucial to recognize the role of neuroplasticity in this process. Our brains are adaptable, and by consistently practicing positive thinking, we can actually rewire our brains to be more inclined towards positivity. This doesn't just impact our mood in the short term, but can lead to long-term changes in our overall mental health and well-being. That's fascinating, Dr. Patel. It sounds like positive thinking can be a sort of mental workout that strengthens our brain's resilience. Exactly, Elena. And like any form of exercise, it requires consistent practice. Mindfulness and meditation are excellent methods to cultivate this habit. They help us become more aware of our thoughts, allowing us to consciously choose positivity. So, would you say mindfulness is a starting point for someone looking to embrace positive thinking? Absolutely, Alina. Mindfulness serves as a foundational skill in recognizing our thought patterns, many of which are negative and habitual. By becoming aware of these patterns, we can start to introduce more positive and constructive thoughts, gradually shifting our default mindset to a more positive one. It seems like a journey of small steps leading to big changes. Alex, can you share a personal example or story where positive thinking significantly impacted someone's life? Certainly, Elena. I had a student who was struggling with severe self-doubt and anxiety. Through practicing mindfulness and consciously adopting a more positive outlook, she was able to transform her outlook on life. She started seeing challenges as opportunities for growth rather than insurmountable obstacles. This shift didn't happen overnight, but her dedication to positive thinking made a remarkable difference in her happiness and overall quality of life. That's incredibly inspiring. It shows the power of our mindset. Dr. Patel, from a psychiatric perspective, are there any strategies or exercises you recommend to your patients to foster positive thinking? One effective exercise I often recommend is gratitude journaling. It's a simple yet powerful way to shift focus from what's lacking in our lives to what we are thankful for. Even on tough days, finding small things to appreciate can make a big difference in our mood and outlook. This practice not only fosters positive thinking, but can also enhance our overall sense of well-being and satisfaction with life. Gratitude really can turn what we have into enough and more. It's clear that positive thinking is a powerful tool for transforming our lives. As we continue our conversation, I'm excited to delve deeper into practical tips and strategies our listeners can start applying today to cultivate a positive mindset. To add to that, Elena, another practical tip is to practice self-compassion. Often, we are our own harshest critics, which can significantly dampen our spirits and hinder our journey towards positive thinking. By treating ourselves with kindness and understanding, much like how we would treat a close friend, we can create a more nurturing internal environment that's conducive to positive thoughts. That's a great point, Alex. Self-compassion is crucial. In fact, Research in positive psychology has shown that self-compassion can lead to lower levels of anxiety and depression. It's about embracing our imperfections and understanding that failure is a part of the human experience. This mindset encourages a more positive approach to personal development and growth. It seems like both mindfulness and self-compassion are about cultivating a kind and understanding relationship with oneself. 
That sounds like a potent combination for fostering positive thinking. Could you elaborate on how these practices intersect and complement each other? Absolutely, Alina. Mindfulness allows us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment. This non-judgmental awareness is the first step in recognizing our critical inner voice. Once we're aware, we can then actively practice self-compassion by soothing ourselves with kind words instead of criticism. These practices together create a cycle of positive reinforcement where mindfulness uncovers the need for self-compassion, and self-compassion fosters a more positive mindset, which in turn makes mindfulness easier to practice. And to build on that, Elena, there's empirical evidence suggesting that mindfulness and self-compassion can significantly enhance emotional resilience. When we're more resilient, we're better equipped to face life's challenges without succumbing to negative thinking. This doesn't mean we won't experience negative emotions, but we're more likely to bounce back and maintain a positive outlook on life. Emotional resilience really is key to sustaining positive thinking in the long term. It's fascinating how interconnected mindfulness, self-compassion, and resilience are. As we seek to cultivate a positive mindset, recognizing and fostering these connections can indeed be transformative. Continuing on this topic, let's talk about the role of the people around us in shaping our mindset. How important is it to surround ourselves with positive influences, and how can we ensure we're doing that effectively? That's a critical aspect, Elena. The people we surround ourselves with can significantly impact our mental and emotional health. It's often said that we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with, so it's crucial to choose those individuals wisely. Positive influences not only inspire and uplift us, but also challenge us to grow and see the world from different, optimistic perspectives. Ensuring we're surrounded by positivity involves actively seeking out those who embody the values and attitudes we admire and limiting our exposure to negativity and toxicity. Indeed, Alex. And it's not just about avoiding negativity, but also about actively contributing to a positive environment. This could mean offering support to friends, engaging in constructive conversations, and sharing experiences of overcoming adversity. By doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also encourage a culture of positivity and resilience around us. It becomes a mutually reinforcing cycle. That mutual reinforcement sounds like a key strategy for maintaining a positive environment. Could you share some practical steps our listeners can take to start fostering this kind of positive circle around them? Sure, Alina. A simple step to start with is to express gratitude and appreciation towards the people around you. Acknowledge their qualities and the positive impact they have on your life. Another step is to engage in positive activities together, like volunteering, which not only strengthens bonds, but also promotes a sense of purpose and well-being. Additionally, setting boundaries with individuals who consistently drain your energy is crucial. It's not about cutting people off abruptly, but communicating your needs and seeking relationships that are reciprocal and uplifting. To add to that, being open to new relationships is also key. Sometimes, expanding our social circle to include diverse perspectives can introduce us to novel sources of positivity and inspiration. Attending workshops, joining clubs, or participating in community service are all ways to meet people who share similar interests and values. Cultivating a positive network is an ongoing process that requires intentionality and openness. That intentionality and openness seem to be recurring themes in our discussion today. It's clear that cultivating a positive mindset, like any worthwhile endeavor, requires both awareness and effort. Engaging with positive influences, practicing gratitude, and expanding our social circles are all actionable steps we can take to enhance our well-being and happiness. Moving forward, let's delve into how taking care of our physical health can influence our mental state and overall happiness. Alex, could you share your insights on the connection between physical and mental well-being? Absolutely, Elena. The mind-body connection is profound. Regular physical activity, for instance, not only improves our physical health, but also has a significant impact on our mental health. Exercise releases endorphins, 
often referred to as the body's natural antidepressants, which can help reduce stress and anxiety, improve mood, and enhance overall well-being. Furthermore, activities like yoga and mindfulness-based exercises can improve our mental clarity and emotional resilience, creating a positive feedback loop between our physical and mental health. That's a critical point, Alex. It's also worth noting that nutrition plays a significant role in our mental health. What we eat can affect our brain's structure and function, and consequently our mood and behavior. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean protein can support brain health, while excessive intake of processed foods and sugar can have the opposite effect. So, taking care of our physical health through both exercise and nutrition is a powerful tool for promoting positive thinking and happiness. Nutrition and exercise are indeed foundational elements. Dr. Patel, could you elaborate on how sleep fits into this equation? Certainly, Elena. Sleep is another pillar of both physical and mental health. It's during sleep that our bodies heal and our brains consolidate memories and process emotions. Lack of sleep can lead to irritability, difficulty concentrating, and increased vulnerability to stress. Ensuring adequate and quality sleep is essential for maintaining a positive outlook. Practices like maintaining a regular sleep schedule, creating a restful environment, and limiting screen time before bed can help improve sleep quality, thereby supporting our overall happiness and well-being. It sounds like taking care of our physical health is a multifaceted approach that includes exercise, nutrition, and sleep. Adopting habits in these areas can significantly boost our mental well-being. Alex, in your experience, how do individuals begin to make these lifestyle changes, especially if they feel overwhelmed by the prospect? That's a great question, Elena. The key is to start small and focus on one change at a time. For instance, incorporating a short 10-minute walk into your daily routine can be a great starting point for those new to exercise. Similarly, adding one serving of vegetables to each meal can be an initial step towards improving one's diet. Small, incremental changes are more sustainable and less overwhelming than attempting a complete lifestyle overhaul overnight. Celebrating these small victories can motivate individuals to continue on this path of improvement. And it's important to remember that setbacks are a normal part of the process. Rather than viewing them as failures, view them as opportunities to learn and grow. Adopting a compassionate approach towards oneself, emphasizing self-care and seeking support when needed can make the journey towards positive living more manageable and enjoyable. That's very empowering, Dr. Patel. Speaking of self-care, let's not forget the importance of mental exercises like gratitude journaling. Alex, how does something as simple as acknowledging what we're thankful for each day impact our happiness? Gratitude journaling is a powerful practice, Alina. It shifts our focus from what we lack to what we already possess, fostering a sense of abundance. This simple act of writing down things we're grateful for can significantly improve our mood, reduce stress, and even lead to better sleep. It's a form of positive reinforcement that encourages our brain to seek out and focus on the positive aspects of our lives, which is a cornerstone of positive thinking. Indeed, Alex. And to build on that, research shows that gratitude can also strengthen relationships, improve physical health, and enhance empathy. It's a testament to how interconnected our emotions, thoughts, and physical well-being are. The practice of gratitude can serve as a bridge, connecting these aspects of our lives in a harmonious way. Strengthening relationships, improving health, and enhancing empathy are all key components of a happy life. It's fascinating how a practice as simple as gratitude journaling can have such profound effects. Dr. Patel, in your practice, how do you encourage individuals to maintain these positive habits consistently? Consistency is often the biggest challenge, Alina. I encourage individuals to integrate these practices into their daily routines in a way that feels natural and enjoyable. For instance, some might prefer to journal in the morning to start their day on a positive note, while others might find it more beneficial at night as a reflective exercise. The key is to make it a regular practice without it feeling like a chore. Additionally, 
leveraging technology like reminder apps or online communities for accountability and support can be incredibly helpful in maintaining these habits. That's a great point about leveraging technology, Dr. Patel. In an age where our lives are so intertwined with digital devices, using them to remind us to pause, reflect, and practice gratitude can turn what is often considered a distraction into a tool for enhancing our well-being. It's clear that integrating physical care with mental exercises like gratitude journaling creates a well-rounded approach to cultivating happiness and a positive outlook on life. This holistic approach seems to be key in living a truly happy life. Before we wrap up, I'd love to touch on the concept of challenging negative thoughts directly. We've talked about gratitude and routine, but how do we confront those inevitable negative thoughts that creep in? Challenging negative thoughts requires a bit of mental discipline, Elena. Cognitive behavioral strategies, such as thought recording, can be effective. This involves writing down negative thoughts as they arise and then critically assessing them for accuracy. Often, we find that our thoughts are based on assumptions or misconceptions rather than facts. By systematically disputing these thoughts, we can gradually shift our mindset towards a more positive outlook. Adding to that, mindfulness meditation is a fantastic tool for becoming more aware of our thoughts without immediately reacting to them. It allows us to observe our thoughts as if they were clouds passing in the sky, acknowledging their presence, but not getting swept away by them. This practice of detachment can help reduce the intensity and frequency of negative thoughts. It sounds like awareness and critical analysis play crucial roles in mitigating the impact of negative thoughts. By combining these strategies with the daily practices we've discussed, our audience can equip themselves with a robust toolkit for fostering happiness. Any final thoughts as we conclude our discussion? I'd just like to emphasize that while the journey towards a happier, more fulfilled life requires effort, it's also filled with rewards. Adopting a positive mindset doesn't mean ignoring life's challenges, but rather choosing to approach them with resilience and hope. Everyone's journey is unique, and it's never too late to start. And remember, happiness is a practice, not a destination. Consistency, support, and compassion for oneself are key. Let's all commit to taking small steps each day towards a happier life. Thank you for this wonderful discussion. Thank you, Dr. Patel and Alex, for sharing your insights and practical tips. And thank you to our listeners for joining us today. Remember, the power of positive thinking can transform your life in profound ways. Keep challenging those negative thoughts, practice gratitude, and don't forget to take care of both your mind and body. Until next time, stay positive and keep thriving.